What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Enigmatica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, we made ourselves this extended crafting table thing. What is this thing even called? The crafting core? Yeah. So I was checking this thing out off camera. In fact, I made three more pedestals here. We have a few recipes that we can do with that. So like this ultimate control circuit, for instance, can be crafted on the empower, which we've been doing very slowly, or you can craft it on the combination crafting thingy here. Um, I guess you can also do it with Draconic Evolution, but I can't imagine this would be much faster. Anyway, so this thing, the extended crafting combination crafting deal, you can place these items on the pedestal one at a time. Yep, like so. And when you put the elite control circuit on there, boom, done. Like instant, right? That's really, really, really awesome. Okay. So, like in that, um, I've been trying to check out the Empowerer over here <laughs> to see if we could get this thing to be fast enough. And no matter what I do, like I'm using these cryostabilized flux ducts. Underneath here, we have the flux point set to limit false. So, we're setting as much power as we can to four different cryostabilized flux ducts. And then we're connecting on multiple points over here. I'm thinking that maybe... These were sighted and whatever, they need multiple connections and that seems to help a bit. We're connected on four, or I'm sorry, three sides underneath and then the two sides here on pretty much all of these, they got three connections. So when I put this last item in here, this other atomic alloy, you see the power starts dropping on this thing and it can't stay full. Yeah, I don't think there's any reason at this point for us to continue to use the empowerer. I was kind of looking at the uses for this thing and you can use it to make a few different things. We're not using the canola at all. Uh, empowered redstone, like if you look at the recipes for these, you can see that you can do it on the combination crafting. So that would take no time at all. Um, and it's pretty much the same for all of these things. So is there anything specific that the empowerer can do that we cannot do anywhere else? What about this? Nope, that's done right there. That's probably gonna be an instant craft just the same. I think we're done with the empower. <laughs> to be completely honest, I think we're good to go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and grab all of these items out of here. Grab that one out of here. Goodbye, goodbye. I see no reason to keep this thing here any longer, which means we can get rid of that stair. Uh, and I guess we can get rid of the hopper. I'm not sure if I wanna get rid of the hopper just yet. What I'm thinking though, is that we can replace that with this, right? It does the same things that we've been doing the empowerer with. So if we just replace these like so, I haven't tried this. I don't know if these work with hoppers or if you can automate this or any of that. So we're just gonna play around with this for just a moment here and place this guy like so. Maybe this will work. I guess we'll find out here very shortly. Let's clean up this ugly mess before we do though. Yeah, no reason to have all of this stuff like that anymore. We don't need the power cables. Okay, so let's try splitting these up. See if they accept from the hoppers first of all. Looks like they do. Okay. So all that seems to work just the same. Now if I put this thing in here, did it just do all of those that quickly or? No, okay, so this doesn't seem to work with this hopper at the bottom. We would need some kind of a filter down there. Uh, so let's also just cover that all back up. And if we put these in here, so it's putting them on there, but it's not, oh, you know what, it needs power, doesn't it? You, okay, well, <laughs> let me try putting this hopper back down here again. Since this seems to be an instant craft, if we give it power, I wonder, yeah, no limits, got power in here. I wonder if it'd be able to craft them. Well, it's using all sorts of power and it's not doing it, yeah. Okay, so I don't think we wanna do a hopper. We wanna do something that will filter the correct item out of there so we're not just like putting it in there and it's using power <laughs> and not crafting. Okay, well, I mean, with how quick this is, it's not like it's any big deal for me to sit here and pull these items out after it's crafted, right? If 
but it would be better to have it automated. Yeah, it's better overall. I'm happy with it. We don't need all those extra cables underneath. Um, I've also been doing some things down here, tightening up or tidying up things around so there's no more random cables off of our core here. I move this up so it's kind of more out of the way. This is now being powered by one flux point. Yep, and everything else that had a cable coming off of it is now coming out of this ME dense smart cable, which is kind of running underneath the floor here. So our storage drawers over here, we had a cable running across the ceiling that connected to here. That's now running underneath behind and touching the back of the drawer controller. All of this stuff over here, we have the cable running underneath. I finally added in the other advanced inscribers completing this wall. So these back three over here can each do all three different types of processors. Doesn't matter which one it is. And then these three in the middle here can do silicon. Yep. And then these three are just the three different types of processors. So if we have all three different types of processors being made at the same time, they can all be crafted without waiting on a different processor to be finished. Anyway, so that's just one thing that I did over here. Got rid of all the power cables around, all the extra power cables, that is. Cleaned up everything as best I could. I did push this wall back one block. I moved our molecular assemblers from being in the center here over. I felt like it was too cluttered, like when we go downstairs from up here, and I want to go this way. I'd run right into it before. Yeah, that was kind of annoying. So I moved it out of the way. Yep. Just been trying to clean up the place, moved our uh, processors over there. Uh, I did extend our extreme reactor down three more blocks. So it's 40 blocks around for the casing. So I had to make 120 more casing, and then I had to make 27 more of the fuel rods. And now this reactor is making, I think a little over 100,000, what, what does it say? 114,000 RF per tick. So we're making a decent amount, but even with all that, like <laughs> the amount that we put into this thing is nothing. It seems like, yeah, barely anything is being measured on there. Um, yeah, so pretty much all the extra cabling and all of that stuff we've gotten rid of. Flux points are pretty much everywhere. And in the case where we got a line of machines that all need to be powered, we still are using these conduit, or I guess the uh, flux ducts here with the flux points on them. Yeah, I think that makes everything just so much better. We don't have to have extra cables everywhere. Everything looks a lot more clean. I'm very much more happy with it like that. Okay, so now that that stuff is all done, what I want to work on today, since now we have flux points, this has been one of the big things that's been holding us back for quite some time. I want to make a digital miner. Digital miner. So having a digital miner, we could have always made one of these, but powering it, there was no way for us to power it. Now that we have wireless power, we can take this to the nether mine. We can take it a thousand blocks away in mine. It doesn't matter. So yes, we should be able to make one of these things. Now, I don't know if we have, yeah, we don't have everything. So we need two atomic alloys. These are auto craftable. That's easy. We need two teleporters. We have those auto craftable. Oh, that has, that's going to use our, uh, wait, oh, we're missing blaze powder. Really? Okay. Put some of that in there. Uh, so teleporter, that's going to use the two <laughs> void things that we just made. We'll have to make more of those, uh, or atomic. I mean, should just make like 10. So we have extras. Uh, all right. So everything else advanced computer oh man this is a whole bunch of micro crafting isn't it oh boy so a screen tier two we have to make a computer case what else we need we need a central processing unit which means we have to make all of this stuff do we got ah oh, no okay so i'm going to get through the micro crafting for the advanced computer can we make this memory thing no all right let me go ahead and get the rest of the stuff made for this and we'll check out the digital miner all right, a lot of fun micro crafting out of the way. Digital miner, get. Oh, yeah. So I do believe there is a quest for this, and we, like, knocked out a few quests last time as well. Let's go to the mechanism tab. Yeah, so we have this one. We can claim that. Uh, last episode, we...
claimed a, or we uh, got a few different quests complete. But I'm not sure exactly where those were. Got some Ender IO ones. All right, let's do this one. We got this one. Right, I think that was all the Ender IOs are the ones that we did. Uh, Soul Vial, Power Spawner, that's something we haven't made. I don't know if there's anything else in here, man. We still got so many quests to do. Here's one, Angel Ring. That's from a couple episodes ago. Mechanism. I think we went through all these ones so far. Okay, I don't think there's any further ones. So let's pop this. We get ourselves Southern Style Breakfast. We get Cranberry Jelly Sandwich and Rods. Eight of them. We get Nether Stars. Just one. Just one Nether Star. And Man of Steel. Eight of them. Okay. So, you know, not bad, not bad. Uh, yeah, let's put another star away, that away, that. And I'll put our food down in our fridge like we do. Still keeping it down here. Don't want to put the digital miner in there. <laughs> okay. So we can check out the digital miner. But before we do that, we need to get ourselves some speed upgrades. We need eight of those. And we want energy upgrades as well. Oh, I don't have those on auto craft. Hmm. Energy upgrade. These guys. So that is pulverized gold. Do we have pulverized gold on auto craft? We don't. All right. We can just go ahead and craft these up real quick. It's not like it's going to take that long to do. And we should have everything else, right? No, we don't have these. Just make 30 of those. Doesn't really matter. We'll use them eventually for whatever else. Okay. So we want to make these guys this that okay so we have the energy upgrade the speed upgrade there's also another upgrade that we can do for mechanism for the digital miner specifically and that's the anchor upgrade uh and it keeps this chunk loaded so that might be something worth doing i've never done this one before that requires a diamond dust i think you can just pulverize a diamond for that right I don't know if I've ever made a diamond dust for IC2 in this mod pack. Diamond dust. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what you do. Cool. So now we can chunk load the chunk this thing is in. So digital miner. Place it down. We want to... Can you not shift right click these on here? Really? I thought you could. Okay. So digital miner, you go into the upgrades and you just put those into the thing here. I am actually going to speed this up because I know for... Actually... Does that work? Maybe not. Since this is a multi-block thing, I'm not sure which block you need to speed up to make that go faster. I know I've done this before. <laughs> if I have, um, yeah, I think I was using an acceleration wand on it and it made that go faster in a different pack, different version. But anyway, I guess we'll just let these things go in here. So the digital miner, uh, you can set a configuration. We want the radius to be as far as it'll go, which I think is 32. I don't think it goes further than that. We want the minimum to be zero, maximum to be 128 most of the time. Okay, we want to set a filter. One of the things that I'm really looking for is or uranium. Does it find it? It knows exactly what that is, so we'll click save. So now it knows that we want to find uranium ore. So if I click, well, let's not click anything just yet. Let's place this here. Okay, so flux point, limit false. This thing should be going as fast as it possibly can. It says it needs 3.23 thousand RF per tick. Um, I don't think there's anything else that I need to do here. So if I click start, it's going to find all the uranium ore in 32, is it 32 chunk? I'm not sure exactly what that 32 was. Is it 32 blocks away, 32 chunks away? I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, it's going to find all that ore and mine it for us. So the uranium that we did last time, yeah, we've dropped down about a 1,000, a little over a 1,000, I think. Um, and we're not getting the ore fast enough to make up for that. So what I'd like to do is be able to go out to different places, plop this thing down, just get this uranium ore. Yeah, I think that's going to be kind of nice. And then any other ore that we could possibly want. Maybe we want coal, diamonds, whatever. This is going to help us out. We go to the nether, we want cobalt ore, we can just find it, right? Uh, this will also be very useful for when we go to uh, the advanced rocketry planets and we need to find ores there. Yeah, so 
this is a very good deal. So while we're letting this thing go, let's look at making ourselves the wireless crafting table. Uh, what is it called? Wireless crafting terminal, terminal, not table. So this is a thing that we need to make. In order to make it, we need to have four ME crafting terminals. Oh boy. And we need a wireless crafting terminal as well. So I don't think, yeah, we don't have any of that stuff on auto craft. Okay, so we need Fluex Pearls. Maybe it'd be a good idea to like auto craft some of this stuff. Um, so Fluex Pearls, let's do that. I want to use the pure Fluex because we're being very stingy. So there's the pure Fluex. Uh, you know what? I was going to do all this together with you guys, but we've seen how to make patterns before, right? Is there a lot of reason for me to do this? Uh, I'm guessing not. Dents. Yeah, we can make those. We've got everything to do that. Yeah, let me just go ahead and go through, make the patterns. We'll get this stuff so we can auto craft it. I want to auto craft these terminals. Yep, let me do that and we'll be right back. All right, guys, so all the patterns have been made all the way down here at the bottom. Yeah, so we got everything that we need in order to craft all the different things to get wireless crafting terminal set up. So let's make a wireless crafting terminal, first of all. Should have everything ready to go. Apparently, it's got to make another dense. Or did it not? Oh, it never finished that, did it? Oh, so that might not finish up either because it doesn't know how to make the dents. Why is it not finishing up? I wonder. Energy cell. You know what? It's probably, let me take these out. That's on the iron chest one. So if we place this here, I probably need to set this to allow substitute on both of these. I've seen that problem before where it like crafts the components, but it just doesn't finish. And when that happens, it seems like setting it to allow substitutes is what allows it to finish. So let's cancel this. Let's cancel that. Let's go back in wireless crafting terminal. We tell that to craft. There it goes. Okay. So that worked right away. Um, very good. So you can see here that the power immediately powered up. I didn't need to do anything. And that's because of the flux networks controller. We made that last time, but I didn't really sit it down or talk about it at all. So over here by our extreme reactor, I put the flux controller down. So you do have to set it to the network and then you can turn wireless charging on just by clicking this button, right? And then I think, yeah, configure wireless charging. So by default, your armor is set to true. Your bobbles inventory is set to true. Inven your player inventory and hotbar, but I had to turn on left hand and right hand. Those are separate. Uh, so if you only want things to charge in your left hand, you'd have to go through and turn these all off, right? So it's very configurable. This is quite nice. I like it. Um, so yeah, we have that set up. And like I said, enable limit false. So it's trying to charge everything in our inventory as fast as it possibly can, as fast as the items will accept it. So that's another reason why when I set down the digital miner, I had a little bit of power in it. Yeah, because it charged for my inventory. So this thing is now done. That's pretty cool. Let's grab those and just throw them in the system for later. Okay. Um, so wireless crafting terminal is done. Now we can't really do anything with this unless we get ourselves a net or security, this thing, the security terminal. So more crafting, but everything is auto craftable. So that's not a big deal. I think the longest part of it is just going to wait on the pure Certus. So while we're waiting on that, we can get ourselves a wireless access point. That's another key component to being able to use applied energistics wirelessly. And then we're going to want some booster cards. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly how many we want. Let's just make 64 of them. Uh, they get quite expensive the more you put in and they extend the range quite far. I'm not sure how far we're going to need to extend the range in this pack. Um, in some packs, the wireless crafting terminal, uh, you put in the infinity card and then you can use it anywhere across dimension. In some packs, you can't do that. So I don't know how this is set up just yet. So we are going to find out here very soon. So there's the boosters. Uh, whoops. Wireless access points, this guy. And then we're also going to want the security 
and that guy. Okay, so we have everything ready to go to set up our wireless network now. So I'm gonna put the security terminal right here. Can go anywhere in the network. I'm just gonna put it right there. And the access point right there. Uh, so it says that's missing a channel. Why is that missing a channel? I've never had a problem doing this before. Oh yeah, okay, there we go, device online. Okay, uh, so now in order to get the wireless crafting terminal to know how to talk to your system, you have to put it into the security terminal right here. So then it links up. Now we can right click and we get access to everything in our network. That's fantastic. But there is a range limit. So this says it'll only work up to 16 blocks away. So if we go over here, yeah, it doesn't work. Out of range. That kind of sucks. So we can come back over here and we can put these boosters in. So you can see by putting half a stack, we're now using additional 378 RF per tick to do that. That extends the range to 200 blocks away. Do we need to be 200 blocks away? I don't know. If we take out half of that, the range is 80 blocks and it only uses 80 RF per tick. So it gets quite expensive the more you put in there. Yeah. Anyway, maybe 16 is enough for now. That's going to cover the entire base area here. Um, what else do we need to do? Oh, yeah. Uh, the bobbles. If you shift click bobbles, they try to go into this slot. Okay, maybe not in this pack. Uh, angel ring. Oh, it won't let me put it back in here. Oh, why won't that go back in there like that? Oh, oh, you know what? It's got a red thing there. Why has it got a red thing? So I can take it out, but I can't put it back in. That's really weird. I wonder why it's like that. Okay. Well, anyway, um, in this, <laughs> wireless crafting terminal. If you shift click items that are a bobble from your inventory, they try to go here. I think there's a mod option for the, uh, what is it? WCT the wireless crafting terminal. I think there's a configuration option. Maybe this is an older version. Um, there was a configuration option added where if you shift click bobbles, it won't go into this slot, but either that's been completely disabled or we're on an older version of this mod. I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, so now that we have all of this stuff done, yeah, let's take a look. Does this use the infinity energy or is it just, oh, it doesn't say, um, infinite. Oh, let's do booster. Is it this one? Infinity booster card. Okay. So this doesn't say on it that it uses the infinity energy. So if we make this thing, which is quite expensive. Yep. If we make this thing, then all we got to do is place that into our wireless crafting terminal. Oh boy. Huh. And we can use it anywhere cross dimension and have complete access to all of our items. This is quite the crafting recipe. So Ionite Athium. So Athium or Ethium. We need a void or minor tier five minimum before we can even consider doing that. That kind of stinks. And then we need two singularities. That's not a big deal. Quantum link chamber is not a big deal. Yeah. And then we're going to need enough pedestals to do this entire craft. Yeah. There might be some other things in here. That's a little, little bit difficult. We have to do another octatic capacitor. That's more charged draconium, the enticing crystal villager soul and an emerald. Mm hmm. Okay, well, we're not going to be doing any wireless stuff yet. <laughs> or I guess cross dimension stuff. Oh, boy. Well, we got some good things happening. Anyway, these are things that we've needed to do for a while. Oh, yeah, the uh, wireless crafting terminal, you can also put it as a bauble itself on your head slot. And then you can map a key to it. I personally don't really like doing that. It's up to you if you want to just have a key mapped to it or not. I like just having an item to right click on. So yeah, we're going to do it that way. All right, guys. So we don't have a whole lot of time left in today's episode. I just got done redoing my bow. Previously, we had mending on it. And I have decided that since mending and infinity are mutually exclusive, you can either have one or the other to get mending off there since we can always repair the bow and put infinity on there so we don't have to worry about carrying arrows on us. Yeah. So anyway, 
Uh, what I want to do is test out this bow and take a look at trying to finally fight one of these dragon things. I don't know if this is a good idea or not. Uh, that one, you know what we should do? Let's not, let's not fight that one. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure that I've seen over here in the desert, unless they're, yeah, right here maybe. Yeah, there's dragons stuck in this quicksand. Oh man, that's loud. The, yeah, anyway, the dragon's stuck in that quicksand. How do we turn that sound down? Uh, music and sim, hostile creatures. Is that still loud? It's still loud. Why is it still loud? I don't know. Well, anyway, it's slowly sinking into the quicksand. Let's do some damage to it. Oh, man. Okay, so now that we did some damage to it, what does it do? It just died. Do we not get any drops from it? Does it slowly give us drops? I thought this would give us the hearts and stuff. Let me get rid of this quicksand. Oh, I can't get rid of the quicksand. It's a liquid. I was... How do you get the hearts out of these dragons then? Huh. Yeah, I was expecting this dragon to give us a dragon heart since we killed it. But I'm not entirely sure how you do that now. Can we... Oh, oh yeah, we're too far away. Uh, I wanted to get rid of this quicksand. I guess we can just place down regular sand on top of it, yeah? Oh, boy. That's annoying. So if you place it... <laughs> yeah, you can just place it down in the ground and get it. Hmm, maybe we should try and fight that other dragon then. I'm kind of curious. I don't know if this dragon isn't giving us a dragon heart because it's in that quicksand... Or if maybe it did give us that heart, but that can't come to us because it's in the quicksand. Uh, I don't know. The dragon's still moving. That's kind of freaking me out a little bit too. <laughs> um, maybe I'll fill this all in. Maybe that's what I'm going to do. I'll fill this all in and see if we can get a heart to pop out of that quicksand. Yeah, I don't know how that works because there's an item there. I have a magnet on, right? Or do I not have my magnet? I have a magnet. Yeah, it just doesn't want to come to me if it's in that quicksand, I think. Okay, let me try filling this in real quick. All right, well, unfortunately, that happened too fast for me to show you, but we can fly in this quicksand. Yeah, it's like we're in creative mode. This stuff doesn't slow us down as long as we're in creative flight. If we're trying to walk or jump, yeah, it just doesn't really work too well. If we have our angel ring doing work, we can fly around and see what's going on. So I was trying to place these blocks and I couldn't get anything happen. I was pressing shift, trying to do stuff and I shift right click and yeah, I was getting dragon scales off it. I got fire dragon flesh and then I got the dragon heart plus some bones and a skull. I don't know what any of this stuff does. This, however, the uses for that, you can turn into a regular dragon heart and you can use that for making this quantum entangle porter. So that's kind of what I was looking at looking to do. So now that we know how easy those dragons are, let's come back over here to this one that was flying around. Yeah, I've been waiting a long time to try and take on these dragons. Now that I know that they're not that bad, I am very interested in taking some of them on. Yeah. Oh, oh. I killed it. Okay, yep, yep. <laughs> so our bow, by the way, if you didn't see this, Unbreaking 3, Infinity, Multi-Shot 4, Power 5. This thing's a beast. So when we fire it, it shoots a whole bunch of arrows, and they all do damage at the same time, I believe. So is that a total of 5 arrows? The Multi-Shot is 4, so it's 4 additional ones. And then we have Infinity, so we don't need any arrows on us. So anyway, let's see if we can do this now. Shift-right-click on this thing. Let me get the bow out of here. Shift-right-click. So that gives us some of the dragon scales, more dragon scales. We got some of the fire dragon flesh, I guess more scales, and then a heart. Then you do that, you get bones, 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 and then the skull. So that's how that works. So that is two of these fire stage three. So what are the uses of these? You can turn it into a command staff, or you can use it for a banner. The command staff, huh? 
Yeah, I don't know anything about this mod. To me, that almost make me think that I could use that to take on another dragon or make a dragon do my bidding. I'm not sure. Here's a green one. Let's fight this one. Oh, wait. I need the bow on me? Yeah, there we go. This one seems a little bit more difficult. Okay, I don't have food. We need food. Gonna die. We're about to die. I don't want to die, but we're gonna. Can we just leave? <laughs> oh my goodness. That one was a little bit more difficult. Luckily, we're able to get away from it. Okay. Yeah, I was curious like how these things are gonna work here. I want to make sure we keep that up too, so we keep our buffs. All right, yeah, that one definitely is a little bit more difficult. Or maybe our shots just weren't hitting it. I'm not sure. Uh. Oh no! 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 Let's get out of there. Let's fully heal up. Oh man! Every time we take that fire damage, it like makes us slow down a little bit. That's annoying. Yeah, let's fully heal up here. And we'll try that dragon again. Okay, we're fully healed. I'm very curious to see what's going to happen here. That dragon is still over here doing something. Is it up in the air still? Yeah, there we go. Suck it, dragon. I think the problem was we just weren't hitting it with the, the arrows. Yeah, it seemed to take a lot of damage when I actually hit it with all of the arrows. Yeah, that's the problem. We got to be above it so our arrows all land on it. Okay, now we know. So let's get the goods out of this dragon. Awesome. All right, so we got three of the fire dragon hearts. And again, they don't have any other use other than making quantum and tangelo porters, which you can also do using the regular dragon hearts. So we can just freely turn those into these. There's no reason to not. And then this other stuff, yeah, I'm going to have to do some research into this mod and see if there's anything else pretty cool that we can do with these bones. Uh, I guess these only stack to eight for some reason, and these don't stack at all. Okay, guys, so I was looking. The dragon scales that we got, the emerald and the bronze, it seems like those are only used to make armor, and the armor is slightly less good than what we're currently using. It looks kind of cool. Maybe we should farm up enough to like make the entire set of both of them. And then the same thing for the emerald. It's just a different color of the same armor would appear. Yeah, so that's not that great. The fire dragon flesh looks like you can cook it or I guess uh, use it in the culinary generator. Uh, it's got a decent amount of saturation and hunger. And apparently you don't have to cook it to eat it. Mm. Okay. So we've seen these things, the uh, dragon bones, the uses on these guys, you can turn into a dragon horn. I kind of want to do that. So dragon horn, looks like there's two different versions, horn fire, horn ice. Oh, I won't let me click those. Uh, okay. So we just have the regular dragon horn. So there's three different ones. So let's craft this. I don't know what this does. I'm right clicking it and it is doing nothing. Okay, <laughs> I was expecting it to do something. It doesn't do anything as far as I can tell. Uh, there's also a dragon bone flute that you can craft. Does that make a song? It certainly does. But what does that do? I actually do not know. Uh, the dragon skulls. Yeah, we saw we can turn that into the command staff. And that is about it for this stuff. Maybe we should make one of the command staves or staves just to see. So that's the ice one. And then there's a fire one. If I right click this. Yeah, nothing's happening. I'm going to have to look up this mod and figure out what those things do. They seem like they'd be pretty cool. The dragon bone flute is the only one that does something. Maybe that calms a dragon. Maybe it makes a dragon come out of the sky so you can melee it. Yeah, I honestly don't know, but yeah, that's pretty cool. That's the first time we've really gotten to check out that. Oh yeah, I don't have my helmet on, do I? I've been using these reading glasses. Oh no. 
So what happened to my helmet? Is it over here? Oh, you know what? I might have repaired it and put it into this thing. Yeah, we're just using full Supremium armor. Ah, maybe that's why it's taking so much damage. I guess it's not a whole lot more. Anyway, yeah, uh, using these reading glasses because I was making books and stuff. <laughs> Whoops, forgot to check that. Anyway, so yeah, we checked out the dragon stuff. That's pretty cool. We got ourselves a wireless terminal. We got ourselves a digital miner. We also hooked up this stuff over here. Whoa, this stuff over here to be kind of automated. I'm sure there's a way that we can get this thing to be fully automated if we want to go there. Like I said, there are the other uh, recipes that require a whole lot more of these uh, stands around. So I'm not sure if that's something that we want to do. But anyway, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.